Hello, welcome back to Survivor LU After Party. I am here with the 10th eliminated contestant, Lily Tate. How are you, Lily? I am good. I'm a little tired right now, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> You're totally fine, I am too. So let's get into it. I asked the same question to everybody else. What was your reaction on day one when you showed up to the field two years ago, almost two and a half years ago now, and you saw the 19 other contestants there before you ready to play Survivor? Honestly, my first thought was, what did I get myself into? Um, I think going into it, I had no idea what to expect. Um, Ellie from season one and I are really good friends. And so she's the person that convinced me to play. And so I had heard her talk about it. Like each week we would be in class together and she'd give me updates about how her season was going. And even from that, I still had no idea like what I was getting myself into. So you roll up and you find out that you're on the mixed tribe, the Kalahari tribe. What was your reaction there? Like, were you nervous? Were you excited? Did you want to get right into it? Or what was going through your head? I think of all of the tribes, like looking at it, that was the tribe I would have picked. Um, because I think, I mean, obviously I couldn't have been on the all guys tribe, <laughs> but um, I think between being on a mixed tribe or an all girls tribe, I think with the all girls tribe, it can be really hard to kind of, the thing with girls is like you find your people and you stick with that. Um, versus I think with the guys, I, I felt like it was a really good mix um, from the beginning. Cause you really didn't like, yeah, the girls kind of like Hallie and I really stuck together and then, um, but you couldn't just use the, the three girls um, and go to the end. You couldn't just like, you had to use each other to get through it. Um, and I think it really created a unique dynamic in the fact that like we had some of the strength and the brain power, but we also had some of that social ability. I mean, look at CK and the game that he played up to that point. I think what he was able to do, like you wouldn't have been able to do that on a girl's tribe. Like if I had tried to do that on a girl's tribe, it wouldn't have worked. Like there's no way it would have worked. So I think it was a really unique dynamic that neither, neither of the other two tribes had. And I really enjoyed it. So you were known throughout the entire pre-merge up until the one time that you were immune for receiving a vote at every single tribal council except for the merge and up until that point until you got idled out. So what do you think caused that? Like, why do you think every single time you got voted for at least once? I think, so after the first um, challenge, like leaving that challenge, um, I was, I was a sophomore in the nursing program. Like I had a test that Wednesday. It was a Monday or it was a Monday or Tuesday. And it's like, I had a test coming up. So it was like, I had to leave. And the rest of my tribe went and got dinner together. And at that point I was like, okay, I don't know how much, like, how much am I going to care about this game? Is it worth <laughs> me not studying for a test or getting, um, a couple less percentage points on a test <laughs> to care about this game? Um, so I went back and I studied. I remember I called my mom and I was like, I'm pretty sure I'm the first one out. Like I was almost positive because they were all going to go talk and I couldn't because I had a test. And um, so I think I just be kind of became kind of like the goat of like, if we can use somebody like, all right, she's already gotten after the first week of like, all right, she's already gotten one vote. What's another? Um, and so if you needed somebody to say like all right throw a vote on her it had already been done before and everybody would kind of like go along with it of just like all right like that's not shocking it's not coming out of left field you're like all right vote for lily it's like well i mean her time's gonna come eventually um maybe this is that week and so it wasn't necessarily un like unbelievable after it happened once or after it happened twice so so throughout the entire uh, pre-merge, you were tribe swapped all over the place. You went to every single tribal council except for one yeah. and able to make different connections each time. But in the end, you stuck with Kalahari. You were like, do I flip? Do I not flip? And then at the merge, you stayed with Kalahari and it didn't go in your guys' favor until the very next week. So what, in, like, what sparked you staying with Kalahari? 
it was I don't know what that group of people had like such a strong grip on me um and literally for no reason because like they were throwing votes on me each week they were like if they needed to throw somebody on the, under the bus it was me and so the fact that I kept sticking by them is still mind-blowing to me um but I think mainly it was Hallie I think like CK and Adrice, I was like, all right, all right, CK's got to go. Um, and Adrice is a definitely a power player of just one of those. It was Hallie. Hallie was my kryptonite of just one of those. We formed such a tight bond week one. And I was like, I can't, I can't walk into another challenge or into another tribal after it like betraying her or something like that. Like I couldn't look at her if I did so. Um, but it was just, I don't know. It was, I think it was Hallie. Like I just couldn't betray Hallie. Of at the end of the day, like I, Adrice and CK, of like, all right, great players, but me. But it was Hallie that was really someone I couldn't, couldn't go against. So you're with Hallie up until the entire time you're at the merge and CK is gone. Were you sort of relieved or did you think I'm done? I'm done after this. CK's out. They're going to come for me next. That tribal was both the best and worst feeling on the planet. So I remember the reading of the votes and it's like, CK, like your tribe has spoken. I was both like, yes, like finally. Um, at the same time, it was the worst feeling knowing I was on the wrong side of the votes because that was the first time I had been on the wrong side of the votes. Yeah. Up until that point, with every single tribal that I'd been to, which was basically every single tribal, I was always on the right side. And that vote was the first time I wasn't. And it was, since it was so close, it was just one of those, it wasn't like we were, we were blindsided, but at the same time, it wasn't like it was a landslide either. It's like going in, we, had what could have been the numbers and at the last minute there was a change right. um and so that was that i think that was kind of the why it was both the best and the worst feeling of like yes i finally got someone i had wanted out for a while but wasn't brave enough to do it myself but at the same time being on the wrong side of the votes sucked <laughs> so um, so the only reason that CK went home is because Hallie was not there. Otherwise it would have been a six, six tie. Absolutely. So it's a six, six tie. You guys have to revote. Say the revote is another tie. Would you have gone to rocks for CK or would you have gone with everybody else to turn on him? Or would you have revoted for CK on the revote? Like, what do you think would have happened if it had been a tie? I would not have been willing to go to rocks for CK. He, in my opinion, was not worth it. Like he was a good player, but it wasn't worth sacrificing my game over. It. Not that like my, like he was one of those players, he was never going to win. He was playing too hard that at some point it was going to catch up to him. And so going to rocks to keep him in the game only to be voted out like a couple tribals later wouldn't have been worth it. Um, so I prob either way, I don't think I would have go gone to rocks for him. However, that would have played out. Gotcha. So the very next tribal council, Chadwick flips back to you guys, literally the very next vote. Did you have sort of an optimistic feeling like, oh my gosh, this might actually go in our favor. This is the final six. This is what we're going to do. Or were you more hesitant to trust Chadwick than ever because he just flipped back to you guys? Again, I feel like it was kind of both. I think there's that feeling of like, all right, guys, are we sure? Or is he doing the same thing I did to Victoria for several weeks? So <laughs> just like, yeah, I'm with you. Like, uh-huh. All right. Who are we voting for? Like, let's go. Um, but really at the end of the day, I was like, I'm not voting with you. Um, but yeah, and it was that moment of like, are we sure we're gonna trust him? But at the same time, if this is it, if he's saying, all right, like I'm with you guys, final six, I like part of me was hoping of like, this is it. Like we got a good way to the end. Um, but I think there was still that little bit of doubt. Is he playing us as, as hard as I played Victoria? 
So speak, so speaking of that, you and I are friends now. Victoria is one yeah. of our closest friends. How do you feel watching it back now, knowing how much you manipulated her, how much you lied to her? And every single week she was like, I trust Lily. Maybe I can trust Lily. She just kept coming back to you. <laughs> how do you sleep at night, Lily? Well, in fact, I didn't sleep last night, so that's part of the problem. Um, so that's a, a little funny story. So Victoria came over to my house and um, she met my dad. And the first thing out of my dad's mouth was, oh, you're the one voted my daughter out. So um, that was funny. So clearly my whole family knows. Um, but that was so hard because during quarantine, we built such a strong friendship so quickly that we all thought the game was over. Um, Cause the whole world shut down. It was like, all right, we're not going back to campus. Like there's, we're not gonna finish this. So basically, all right, great. We started it, but um, we didn't think, like we thought it was over. And then to, go right back into the game and go it was just like all right do I go back with what I where I was before like do I go back with the same people I was aligned with before um this thing called COVID happened um or do I go with these really tight friendships that I formed during quarantine Sophie uh Victoria and Delaney we were all having movie nights once a week on zoom of just one of those like we had built such a good friendship but then it's like going back in the game I was like these weren't people I was playing with um and so that was just that was hard because I really wanted to play with them but at the same time there was still that like pull away from them but I think mainly with the manipulation I think part of me is like all right if this works like I'm gonna ride this as far as I can um because Victoria was giving me everything I needed yeah, it was just why I was like, I had to. No, I, I said that's what she said. Yeah. Sorry, I had to. You know me well enough to know that I had to do that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, go on, go on. I'm not cutting that out. <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. Um, I totally lost my train. <laughs> Shoot. This is staying in. Um, all right. Well, so I think it was just one of those, like she was, Victoria was giving me all the information that I needed. So it was just one of those, like, why mess with a good thing? I mean, if she's, if I don't have to vote with her or go my way, like go her way and I'm still getting everything I need. It's like, it's survivor. Yeah. Like half of the game is lying. Yeah. Um, and I think that was one of those, like when I got voted out, it's like, for several weeks after I was like I don't have to lie anymore when somebody tells me something it's not like all right are they really telling me the truth like where are we at here um and I think I had really gotten into kind of the cycle of just lying to people and manipulating that I was just I don't have to do this anymore and I think that was Part of me was shocked that Victoria was still friends with me at the end of the game because of how much that I had lied and uh, manipulated her. But at the same time, I think we all knew that the game was separate, but um, not my finest moment, but at the same time, I'm kind of proud of it. So literally up until the vote that you got voted out, you had started being like, okay, I see these bigger threats. I might not be the biggest threat. So it's time to start making my stable in this game. And you struck a deal with Victoria. We get through this vote and I'm with you and I'm going to turn on you. And I think that I'm not going to turn on you. Was that genuine or were you playing her again? Or were you like, it's time for me to start making moves and start playing? That was a hundred percent genuine because I recognized, I was like, if I continue on this path, I will be the goat, not the greatest of all time as my line was at the end. Um, I will be the goat that's taken to the end, but says oh, these are all the things that I did, but really it's like, all right, I didn't really get credit for any of those. Um, I was simply just there. Um, so I recognized, I was like, I got to start doing stuff. Like I got to start kind of building that resume that isn't tied to somebody else. That isn't, 
all right, so um, yeah, no, CK brought me to this point or, all right, I was a part of the group that got Delaney out. Um, it's like, but I needed something to say, this was me. Mm -hmm. I needed to be able to say at the end of the game, while I wanted to be able to say I played a loyal game, I also wanted to say I played my own game. I wasn't, I played a loyal game, but I was also making moves. I was um, trusting to people, but at the same time, I wasn't kind of like following along or being dragged along to the end. Right. So you literally adopt this mindset and then you go into tribal council and the idol reveals that it's in, Sophie plays it and the two votes or the three, two out of the three votes is all you needed were for you right as you're about to start making moves. Um, do you have, did you have any regrets at that point? Like, do you wish you had played differently or were you comfortable going out from an idol and not just being voted out? I think as soon as I saw Sophie raise her hand, I was like, all right, my dudes, this is me. Like, not us knowing yet. Cause I was like, who else would they be able to throw votes on that people wouldn't be able to say, all right, we got to protect this person or like whatever happened. Um, if you needed kind of your backup plan of like, all right, what if they split or what if this happens? If you needed to throw votes on somebody that they wouldn't see coming, it was going to be me. Right. Uh, from my point of view. Yeah, as evidence throughout the entire season, like you were exactly. the only vote. Um, so it wouldn't have been that far out of left field to say, all right, we can throw it on her, but they, like, it won't be a shock, but they're ne not necessarily going to protect her from that. Mm -hmm. Like, they're not going to split the votes to save her type thing of just one of those, because she gets votes every week. So <laughs> congrats. It's another week. Um. But I think at the end of the day, I wish I would have, I don't know, necessarily flipped, but kind of made a name for myself sooner. I've just like been more independent and not so dependent on Kalahari because I very much was dependent on Kalahari. Um, and I think that was one of those, I think things could have been different if I hadn't been so tied to Kalahari when they weren't necessarily tied to me. Right. Um, I also would have been very curious if things would have been different if we hadn't been virtual for the last half of the game. Because I remember certain challenges, like the one challenge that was like the scavenger hunt of like, go grab this. Um, I was in a part of my house that was close to absolutely nothing. Right. So when it was like, go grab a pair of matching socks, I remember like sprinting across my house to the laundry room and I went straight for our um, mismatched sock bin. So <laughs> clearly that didn't work out in my favor. Um, but yeah, it was just one of those, I think there's certain things that really, no matter what, I think things could have been differently. Like really, if I had sat in a different part of our house, like that challenge would have been different. Um, but I, th I think at the end of the day, it is what it is. And I'm happy to walk away from the game with some really incredible friendships like Victoria and I of like, we are still very close. Um, we talk all the time, even though I've since graduated from Liberty of like, we're still really close. We have this thing where we see each other once a month, even though however far away we are from each other, we still work it out that we see each other once a month. And I think that's something that I couldn't have asked for anything more out of this game, um, no matter how I played. So. so what by going differently do you think would have happened without giving much away of the future of the rest of the season? Because there's three episodes left. How do you think the rest of the game would have gone if Sophie had not had that idol, she gets voted out? Do you think you would have made it to the end based on the track you were going? Or do you think you would have been cut off at a certain point? know that I would have made final three I mean one can always hope that they would make final three um I wouldn't have been surprised if I would have made like fourth or something like that um but I think I was in a a position to where I wouldn't have necessarily won but I was positioning myself to where I wasn't the biggest threat I wasn't going to be, all right, who's this top dog that's going to win over me? It wasn't me. 
<laughs> I was not the one that they were looking at and be like, all right, she's going to win. We got to take her out at some point. That wasn't me. Um, and so I think I was kind of positioning myself in a solid middle. Like I wasn't your top player, but I wasn't your bottom of the barrel. Yeah. Um, I was just, I was kind of existing. And I think that was setting myself up to if I had actually started start being able to make moves and take out these threats without those threats taking out me. Right. You froze for just a second, but I think you said pretty much the main, the most important thing. So oh, that's my internet connection. Okay. Um, I was right. like, I'm sitting right next to my router. So, <laughs> um, so you talk about how you walked out of this game with friendships with Victoria. Is there anyone else from season two that you remained in touch with or made friendships with? Because that's happened for a lot of people that I know from this season, past season, um, for myself, especially and beyond that were like friendships have come out of it and have been so strong. Um, for the sake of helping the survivor community, who else have you remained in touch with and how much of that has affected your life of the community of Survivor LU? Um, I, I have also kept in touch with Delaney, um, which was also a really unexpected friendship uh, to walk out of this with because we, I mean, up until quarantine, like we were not friends. We didn't really know each other. It was like, hey, I know you exist. I knew you were playing the game, but we didn't even really sit down and have a conversation. Um, to be able to walk out with that has been so special. Um, cause really it's actually been in the last couple of months, which considering this was two and a half years ago that we were playing, um, to really get so close in the past couple of months has been really, really nice. Um, cause she also recently graduated from Liberty as well. And so I think we are, we've both really gotten close over, um, kind of that like post-graduation life. Um, and we both like going to the gym. So that's been a really nice, uh, bond that has developed recently. Um, and then I think even from season one, too, I've developed some really great friendships as well. I've just, cause we all got to talking at like, there's those like survivor meetups to where you're all meeting people from season one and season two. So that's been really special. I mean, Ellie, who introduced me to this whole, whole game, I was just in her wedding last month. So I think it's just, it's really cool seeing how um, you develop these friendships. I mean, obviously like we're really good friends and then um, Luke from season one of just, it's been, it's been nice having that community outside of nursing for me, because that's really what I also wanted to get out of it is I was in this little nursing bubble to where all we do is talk about nursing and um, the stupid stuff we see all the time and how much studying that we theoretically should be doing. Um, and I needed a break from that. I needed people outside of it to where it wasn't like, all right, do you study for that test we got this week? It was, all right, so who we voted for it. So it was a nice to have a break from that. And that was something that was so needed. I think one of the things that makes Survivor LU so interesting is like, you're going to bring people from all walks of life, all different majors, but we all love one thing and it's this game yeah. and we can all bond over that and form deeper friendships in the future. Yeah. I like how you talk about unnes like unlikely friendships. You talked about Luke earlier. Like for those that don't know, Luke and I were rivals in season one, hate each other's guts, and now we're living together. So I think that's really cool. And I think it's really cool that you've remained, have, have those friendships because of that. Yeah. Um, so Lily, I am so bummed that you went out the way that you did. I think you were just starting to find your footing and Sam Wright is not playing this game. And I think everyone would have wanted to see what would have happened and how far you would have made it. If you want my opinion, I actually think you would have made the final three. And I think you actually could have potentially won based on who you were sitting next to. But that is a big what if. There are always what ifs in this game. Um, so once again, I don't know if we touched on it earlier, but do you have any regrets after seeing your nine episodes, anything you wish you would have done differently, anything you wish you would have said differently, played differently, now is the time. I mean, first off, I think there's the obvious. I think I should have included Oswald way sooner. Of course. Um, but it I, I, think, there. I think that was the dynamic duo that Survivor LU needed way sooner than the last episode. 
Um, so I think that was really my downfall. That's why they're like, all right, we got to get her out. Like we're missing the dynamic duo. So <laughs> big bummer on that one. Uh, big regrets. But I think really, I wish I wouldn't have been so trusting, um, which is a weird thing to say. But um, I think if I hadn't been so loyal, because I was loyal to a fault. Like, mm -hmm. I think that was my downfall. And I, I don't think that's necessarily a quality that I don't like about myself. But I think in the game, it can come back to bite you. And I think it did. So... Mm -hmm. Okay, Lily, well, we will see everybody else for the rest of the season. There are three episodes left until the season finale, and it is awesome. And the rest of the season is awesome. So I'm looking forward to that. Lily, thank you so much for coming on. We will see you guys next time. Bye.